I'm pretty sure that you have heard about these myths or maybe lies or half truths on chemical engineering. And I just joined you to create this list. So if you haven't checked video number one, go and check it out here. And if you have already, let's continue. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And in this specific video, I prepare a collaboration with Uprup. You may be familiar with him. He's currently making content for chemical engineering students and professionals. His channel is Chem Eng Weekly. So ensure to check it out. And when you told me about this proposal on making a collaboration on the 10 myths that students may have on chemical engineering, I didn't hesitate. Actually, I have been working through some of them already in my channel, but I'm pretty sure that this list is going to be very useful for those young students or professionals. Now, as stated before, this is going to be a two-part video. Video number one is on Jupyter channel. Video number two is right here. So let's continue with the list. Myth number five is that chemical engineering is actually all about chemistry. And this couldn't be far from truth. Actually, I have seen a lot of students that go into chemical engineering because they love a lot of chemistry as a subject. They like to work in the lab, to work with chemicals, and they also want an addition to their profile, so they go for engineering, hence chemical engineering. And although chemical engineering is all about creating chemicals, substances, products, technologies involving chemicals, you could ensure that the production or manufacture of these products goes through this. We're talking about the design, the development, and the optimization of chemical processes and chemical plants. This may for sure be quite related towards chemistry, but much of the time is going to be related towards other engineering disciplines. And I'm not stating that you are not going to encounter chemistry in your student life, for instance, organic chemistry, analytical chemistry, thermochemistry, and so on. But what you're going to see the most is the design of unit operations in processes or plant control that is going to be working towards the design, development, control, process optimization, simulation of a chemical plant. Now, if you want to see the details, ensure to check out this video right here. Myth number four is quite related to the previous myth, and it is all about chemical engineers working as a chemist. This may be a relief for many of you guys, and it may be a disappointment. As a chemical engineer, you are not likely to go to the lab or work with those glassware tests. You're going to be maybe working with a pilot plant, which is going to be working with steels, high pressure, high temperatures, unit operations such as heat exchangers, pumps, and so on. And this is already a small amount of chemical engineers. There are a lot of them that are not going to even go through that. What you're going to see the most is that they typically will go to the chemical plant, see the optimizations, work with numbers, work in simulations, maybe work through reports with projects and with other fellow disciplines. Not only that, they may be working in government institutions, they may be working in private companies, they may be working in research centers, they may be also working in academia, in a university, high school, or so. So I wouldn't say that chemical engineers end up always in the lab, although they can end up if they want to. Hey there, Manuel. Thank you for having me on the channel. It's always a pleasure to work with you on these projects. For those that don't know me, my name is Jupp and I run ChemEng Weekly, where we cover all things chemical engineering from universities to careers. I'm delighted to be on this video. So now let's look at myth number three and two in the rundown of the top 10 biggest myths of chemical engineering. Myth number three, chemical engineers can only work in chemical engineering after graduation. I think this myth comes from the mindset that the degree path you choose is specifically leading on to the career you end up in, which is not always the case. Although chemical engineers actually have a load of different industries they can naturally go into, they don't have to be restricted by this small pool of industries to pick from because their good analytical skills and problem solving thinking skills makes them very viable assets in any industry. Nowadays, up to 70% of careers don't require a specific degree, provided you undertake extra enrichment, meaning that chemical engineers can realistically go into software development, teaching and finance, for example. We also did a video covering the top five most unexpected careers that chemical engineers can go into, and you can check that using the iCard now. This is what makes chemical engineering so attractive. The wide skill set makes you employable in ChemEng, but also outside of that in a number of different fields. 
Myth number two, chemical engineering does not have a big impact in your day-to-day -day life. Now, many people don't actually know what chemical engineering is, which is where this myth comes from. Chemical engineering is actually very important in everyday life because the things that are mass produced has likely been touched by chemical engineering at some point during its life cycle. From the mattress you wake up in in the morning, to the shampoo bottle you use to wash your hair, to the medication you take when you're ill and the water you drink, all of that has been produced by systems managed and maintained as well as designed by chemical engineers. Therefore, without chemical engineers, the basic commodities you take for granted in your life, such as processed foods and the toothpaste you using your brush in the morning would simply not be available. So chemical engineering is actually quite important in everyday life. So thanks a lot for that, you. Let's continue with the last myth, myth number one, which is one of the most important ones because I see a lot of people going or applying to chemical engineering to ensure that they make a lot of money, that they will become millionaires or at least will ensure a very great life with a high income. And although this may be true for a certain amount of chemical engineers, the truth is that it is no longer the degree that was back in the 80s or 90s. So it's going to be okay. You are going to be paid in average slightly higher than the average STEM or engineering discipline, but you're not going to encounter a high paying job initially. Actually, it may take you a lot of time, maybe two, five years to ensure a more senior role. And this is mostly because it really depends on the education that you receive, the region where you have been studying and where you're working on, the experience, whether it's industry or maybe it's more at management or maybe more towards administration roles, the type of industry, the cycle of that industry, and more importantly, the willingness to relocate. There's a lot of companies that will pay you a lot, but only if you go into the middle of nowhere. Recall that this is a very mature industry, so salaries are relatively stagnant in the sense that they are not evolving that much. They are adapting to the market, and if the market goes up, well, salaries will tend to go up. If the industry cycle is going down, well, salaries and job positions are going to cease or go lower. And unfortunately, one of the things that I see the most is that a lot of chemical engineers will not even end up working in something related towards the industry or towards chemical engineering or even worse in any type of manufacturing industry. Now, if you want to get some numbers, recall that according to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, the median annual wage for a chemical engineer in the US was something between $108,000 as of May 2020. One important thing to remark here is that this includes all the workforce, not only recent graduates, not only young engineers, but it also includes a lot of senior engineers, maybe people working in their 60s and so. And this is why you will encounter a lot of young engineers, recent graduates complaining on the job market. If they are not going to be the best salaries, they are not going to be the best job positions or projects, it's not going to be the best companies, and they are most likely going to ask you to relocate. So just as for 2023, we could say that chemical engineering is no longer ensuring that the engineers end up being rich. So if you want to learn more about the salaries of a chemical engineer, you can check out this video right here. And that's it guys, let's make a closure on the video. So first thing first, I really want to thank Juproop from Chem Eng Weekly on asking me to make this collaboration. I really think that we need to ensure to make more content for chemical engineers all around the globe. So check out his channel. He's all about the UK. So if you're having doubts on universities, maybe you're having doubts on how chemical engineering is perceived or what do they study out there, ensure to check out his channel. Now, going back to the list, we explored 10 myths. So if you missed part number one, go and check it out. I really hope that the list was clear and that we dispelled some myths or doubts regarding chemical engineering. It's really important to separate fact from reality or fiction, especially for you guys that are newcomers or are maybe thinking on going to chemical engineering or that you may be studying and are wondering whether or not it's a good fit for you. And of course, there are a lot of other chemical engineering myths. So if you have any doubt and you want to share with us, go and do it in the comment section. On my behalf, that will be it. I'll see you in the comment section.